What's the most fucked up thing a complete stranger has done to you? Me, a child, playing with toys in Walmart. A random stranger, I'd like you to play with my little boy toy. My dad, just on the other end, watching me doesn't say a word to the man just grabs him and throws him across the aisle. Then screams out, if you want to play with him, you're gonna have to play with me first. Go dad. Seems obvious but the police is always the right move in these cases. My daughter encountered a flasher at a cafe when she and her friend were 17. They were mainly embarrassed and didn't want to report it. They did report it and the guy turned out to have several charges already pending and it had his gynecologist license revoked in another state. These people thrive on you not reporting them. <coughs> Sit next to me on the bus when there's a single seat on the other side. Whoever does that is a menace to society. Sometimes when you know the next stop is gonna be a shit show you play it safe and sit next to the person you know doesn't smell like piss instead of the gamble that a piss smeller will sit next to you. I had a guy walk up to the urinal right beside me when there were four others in between us. Sociopath. One time I was in South Philly and a car pulled up with two guys in it. They called out to me asking for directions so I walked over. As I was explaining where to go the dude in the passenger seat spit in my face and they sped off. Least violent person in Philadelphia. I was young and also so beside myself I didn't even full comprehend what happened. Took a couple seconds to register. You just reminded me of a similarly gross interaction. Years ago after a doctor's appointment, I got into my car and turned it on, at which point a small child started leaning slash sitting on the hood. His heavily pregnant mother stood by doing nothing, apparently distracted by her phone. I rolled down my window, and asked if she would mind getting her child off of my car, as I needed to leave, and was concerned he could get hurt. She asked if I had insurance. Confused, I answered yes. To which she said well I hope you do hit him so I can get some money. She proceeded to lean in through my passenger window, and started spitting on me. The kid was no longer on my car, and I desperately wanted to get away from her, so I put my car in reverse. She then hurled her pregnant belly into my side view mirror, and shrieked in such an exaggerated way, as if I had hit her. I eventually found a new doctor. I was about 11 and me and some friends were standing on a small bridge over a lake. All of a sudden I was picked up and thrown over the railing into the lake below. I tried to grab onto anything I could as I fell and scrapped my arms up pretty good. I still have scars 30 years later. So I swim to the side and some older kid comes up to me and just say, sorry, I thought you were someone else. Gotta give the kid credit that he came to apologize. It was a lie, chief. I was around 10 and visiting Gatorland Zoo in Florida. The park had a suspension bridge over water with live alligators in it. I was standing on the middle of the bridge looking over the railing at the alligators. Some teenagers came along and stood on each end of the bridge blocking us in. Then they began forcefully jumping up and down on the bridge, basically violently shaking the whole structure and making the bridge bounce up and down. Because I was leaning over the railing when the bridge bucked violently underneath me, I started to flip up and over the railing. I remember starting to fall head first off the bridge when my dad caught the belt buckle on my shorts, stopping my fall. He pulled me back to safety and then lost his shit on those teens, who took off running. Later we watched an alligator show where the trainer held up raw chickens and demonstrated how the alligators could leap out of the water to get them. I didn't enjoy the show at all because all I could think about was that the alligators below the bridge could have leapt up and eaten me. I have no idea how far below the bridge the alligators actually were but 10 year old me was convinced I almost died. Stopped at a red light one time. Someone from a building adjacent to the light threw a bag of ice and water on my car, from a few stories up. Dented the roof and shattered the windshield. Wasn't even a nice car. I was driving a Dodge Neon shitbox. Reminds me of something. Some asshole tossed a lock, like the combination type out of a car at me and hit me in the knee. I had trouble walking correctly for damn near a month. I always thought if they'd have stopped at a light I'd have hurled that bitch right back. Good thing they didn't. I wasn't in any condition for a fight. Um, what the hell? About 25 years ago, I was walking home from school. A car slowly crept up behind me, and a guy on the passenger side did a hook shot over the roof of the car and just missed me, with a combination lock. Is this a thing? I am 40 years old now but it happened when I was between 12 and 14 because I was walking home from my middle school. Is lock throwing an actual thing? You are quite literally the first person I have ever heard, saying this happened. Anyone I told figured it was some kind of one-off situation, but I was alone at the time so no one saw it but me. I still have the lock in my old dresser drawer at my parents. LOL. This happened to me back in the 70s. I was riding in a car that my best friend's mother was driving on a highway. There was me, my friend, her brother and couple of other kids in the car. The age range for the kids was about 7 to 9 years old. It was a warm day, and my friend's mother had her window rolled down, no air conditioning. A car full of teenagers pulled alongside of her and someone threw a full cup of ice water through the window at her. I got hit by it too because I was sitting in the front seat next to her. She managed not to lose control of the car. 
It in retrospect, it was incredibly fucked up to try and cause a lady with a car full of kids to crash. I was sitting at a cafe with my then partner. A man came up to our table, held finger guns at my temple and whispered I wish I fucking could, and then yanked my hair and rushed out. It was completely unprovoked. I've technically had more violent and scary things happen to me, but that stuck with me for a really long time. I think it's because I had been having a lovely day until that point. I was so excited to be sitting in a cute cafe, eating pie with my date, and now I can't get the image of her face falling as she looked at the man out of my head. We went home after that. Drugs are a hell of a drug. That awful, I have some potentially dangerous patients who the doctors give day leave and I often wonder how it goes, I'm imagining this is how. I hope you're okay, the weird unexplained stuff is harder to process. Psych nurse here, I do community visits and go into these patients' homes. Two years ago I had a Tarasov filed in court for me. A patient, with very uncontrolled symptoms, extremely unwell, unmedicated, with schizophrenia threatened to find me. First and I quote throw a bucket of ice water on my head which frankly, I found comical lol but then he threatened to kill me. In the bedroom where I'd administer his psychiatric M shots. He had stopped taking his meds by mouth and his psych injection was on its last leg, usually decreases in efficacy towards the end of the month, well, the police thankfully found me, told me they had filed a terrace off and alerted me for my safety. So that's what happens when they're out on a day pass. They sometimes come after the nurses or caretakers that look out for them. I had been working with him for 8 years, every week, going into his home to help him. I'd quiet doesn't even phase me though. I had a homeless guy touch my face last week as I was waiting to cross the street and yell obscenities. I just simply walked away. Years of psych nursing will do that to you. I work in retail and once a customer jiggled my belly and said I see the diet stuff doesn't work here I know it doesn't seem much but I keep coming back to it. It was just so IDK invasive? Greater than I know it doesn't seem much. No. That's out of order. What an asshole. My boss, completely unprovoked, a couple of months ago asked me if I'd gotten fatter, yes, I've been trying to lose weight and I'm extremely sensitive about my weight. Apparently it was fine because it was a joke, but I spent most of the next day crying over it. It's not acceptable in any form, so you're more than in your right to be upset about it. I'm so sorry you had to experience that. I hope you're okay. Demeaning, invasive, and delivered with an asshole air of ha ha, which I bet this asshole would jump to if you'd said anything. Fuck em. For sure. It was an older guy who clearly felt he was being a cheeky chappy and would have been horrified if he felt his comment made me want to die. Fuck all customers lol. Punched me, for no reason. I was standing, waiting for the community bus. A stranger got out of the car and punched me. I filed the police report but nothing happened. Basically the same thing happened to my mother a few years ago. She was getting off the bus when a stranger came up and punched her in the eye. The guy was never caught. My grandmother was at the movies and a guy walking up the aisle punched her in the side of the head. He told the cops he was mad because he was on a bad blind date. And, like, great excuse to wallop a 75-year-old woman minding her own business. And you know he's the reason why the blind date was bad. When I was 23, I was working at a fancy-ish restaurant on their support staff. It's on the pier in Vancouver, Washington. On this lovely morning, I was hosting. This was also the second weekend that we had starting serving brunch. It was a pretty popular spot. Our restaurant sat about 350 people, and by noon we were on a two-hour wait. A family came in and demanded a table. I had to respectfully tell them that we had a two-hour wait, and with a party of seven, it would be difficult to make that accommodation work. They were pissed, but they got on the list. Two minutes later another party of seven came in, but they were kind and patient and a breath of fresh air compared to most of the entitled customers' attitudes that day. They also got on the list. Two hours later, we had a table open. I called that rude family twice, and waiting for 15 minutes. No response. The next family had been patiently waiting in the lobby, never bothering me, just peeking in here and there. For context, the other rude family had dropped in every 30 minutes to demand why their table wasn't ready yet. I was getting pissed, so after waiting an appropriate amount of time on a morning like this, I gave the table to the nice family. They were extremely grateful, said they really appreciated me, and they even slipped me some money because they could tell I was having a rough morning. About 15 minutes later, this rude family walks in again and demands yet again, why their table wasn't ready yet. Well, I'm so sorry, your table was ready 20 minutes ago, and I called you a few times. Unfortunately you didn't answer, so I waited another 15 minutes. Because I received no response, I assumed you were no longer interested and I gave your table to the next group. This is ridiculous. We never got a call? I'm so sorry, is your number 3034X? Yes, but I never got a call. I literally turned the phone to them, and showed the call history, that I had indeed called them. So this next part is a bit of a blur, but basically the mom and dad spent the next 30 minutes yelling at me, calling me horrible things, and demanding to speak to management. Management was busy, 
we had been a full house for three straight hours. They then decided to walk into the bar, leaving their kids outside, and yelling about me to the bartenders until they were forced to get a manager to stop these people from upsetting other customers. They even left multiple comment cards about me after one of my managers gave them a table that was for another group. They said that the host was one of the worst restaurant employees they'd ever seen, and wasn't even good enough to be a dishwasher. Even though they said a lot of terrible things to me personally, this comment upsets me the most. A job is a job. Although dishwashing is a shitty job, these people openly acknowledged how entitled they were by being snide about a real job that was beneath them or something. Just gross and slimy behavior. We were still in a rush for the next couple hours, and I was working a double, so I never got a break. A couple hours later, the head chef told me he needed me in the office. He knew I wasn't getting a break, and he knew me pretty well as I'd started this job working as expo, and quickly became lead expo on weekend nights. For context, having about 30 to 50 tickets on the expo line was typical. This was a hopping spot. He told me he heard what happened, handed me a perfect looking steak, told me to sit the fuck down, and that I was not allowed to leave the office for the next 20 minutes and that he'd be appreciated if I finished my plate. He closed the door, and literally stood outside to make sure no one else would come in. I cried for a moment, and at one of the best plates of food anyone has ever handed me. I was beyond touched. Spencer is a huge man, who is soft-spoken but extremely intimidating. He is a gem and I love him dearly. Fuck that family, and fuck the restaurant business. TL, DR an awful family verbally accosted and embarrassed me after I had to give up their table, so the head chef made me a steak. As someone who works in the restaurant industry and has had some crazy entitled people yell and berate me, one of my favorites was, you are the worst server I have ever had. I want a new server, and I think you should be fired. She then complained to my manager for 30 minutes when I sent him over to deal with her. All because she wasn't clear and I brought her a grapefruit juice instead of sliced grapefruit. I asked her what she would like to drink, and she said fresh grapefruit. So she wasn't listening to me, like many rich entitled people seem to do, and then got mad that I didn't read her mind. This after the bartender had gone through the trouble of making fresh grapefruit juice for her specifically. Grapefruit was not on the menu by the way. It was just a side that we happened to have because it was on some of the dishes. Spencer sounds like a remarkable guys. Cheers to him. And sorry you were treated like that. Screw those people. I aspire to be as swolesome as Spencer. <coughs> Drugged out couple walked up to me and touched my nipples at a festival. That's an OSHA violation. Office of super handsy assholes? This happened to me too. Except it was a drunk middle-aged man and as he poked my nipple he slurred electric titty. <coughs> Complimented my penis. I was at a camp shower at a campground. I was around 12 some random guy walked in and just stared at me and watched me take a shower making weird small talk. This was the late 70s, early 80s. Kids weren't special yet and we basically were raised you just be polite to adults so I was yes sir and no sir the creep. The Adam Walsh TV movie changed all of that and parents were like, hey, maybe we should watch our kids a little bit? He didn't rape me so I guess that's A+. plus. Yay the 70s were weird. I still remember being a kid and friends comparing stories about which weird guy in their neighborhood would come up and tell them how good BJ's feel. We just stayed away from them. There was never any telling your parents or calling the cops. Hey, nice cock. Thank you sir. Pulled her pants halfway down her butt and asked me to check the size on her underwear. I hated being a cashier. Don't even have to be a store employee for this one. I was in JC Penney's years ago. Some lady approached me and was like, can you do me a favor sweetie? Before I could answer she turns her butt to me, pulls he pants part way down and asks me what size she was wearing. I told her, sorry miss, I can't read, and promptly hauled ass before she could process what I had said. I love I can't read as a defense. It works every time. Did you do it Lamau? Drove with a blood alcohol level of 0.1 and then rear-ended me at a stoplight going about 50 miles per hour. Totaled my car when I was 21, living on my own and struggling financially. He had no insurance or license because he got drunk and caused a car accident three months prior. Then he died of alcohol poisoning. I got $157.63 from his estate two years later for the damages. But, it was that event that taught me to drive a standard transmission car. Standard trans. Why? Finish the story please. My stepdad gave me $700 to buy a car. This happened Wednesday night, I called off Thursday to look for a car in my price range. I had to choose between a 1970-something VW Bug with 195,000 miles on it, or a 1993 Toyota Tercel standard transmission car with 70,000 miles on it but an unusable back seat. A friend in the area who knew how to drive a stick went with me to pick up the Toyota on Friday. We picked it up in the morning and we spent the whole weekend driving that little car up and down the hilly residential roads around his house. I drove that car to work on Monday. I then taught three girlfriends and my wife to drive a stick since then and will teach all my kids to drive a stick when I teach them to drive. I have a similar story, 
At the end of January I was at my grandfather's wake and I decided to take the kids to MC Donald so that they could eat dinner and rest for a bit in a less depressing place, on the way back a woman that had just gotten her license hit my car in a roundabout, it was 100% her fault but she didn't want to accept blame. The way car insurances here work is that after an accident the driver that caused it gets some points deducted from their license if they admit to what they did and the car gets fixed immediately. If no one admits the blame you can call the police and you have to pay $60, which the woman did, and you have to wait around two months for the people from the insurance company to analyze the cars and the situation so that they can assign blame and start fixing the car. Also the person that is deemed guilty doesn't get money to fix it from the insurance. Yes they judged her guilty and fixed my car for free but the kids were still traumatized. I managed to drift the car inside the roundabout in time so no one got hurt, and I didn't get my car back for three months and I needed it a lot to take care of my grandma. I was in London on business and my hotel was hosting a Christmas party for a bunch of Russians also there on business. I was sitting at the bar by myself and one of the Russian women invited me to sit with her and her friends. Her table had her, three other women and two men. I don't speak Russian but they were all very nice and welcoming to me. The woman sitting across from me was passed out drunk with her head on the table. No one paid any attention to her. After 30 minutes me and the woman who invited me were flirting pretty good. Suddenly the drunk woman sits up straight, points at me, scowls and begins yelling what obviously were Russian swear words. She does this for about a minute while the rest of us just stare at her and say nothing. Then she plops her head back down on the table and goes to sleep. I asked everyone collectively what was that all about? One of the guys replied she doesn't know why you are sitting with us, she hates you and she called your mother some very bad names. But don't pay her any attention, she's a crazy Russian. We're happy to party with an American. Well don't leave us hanging. What happened to you and flirty Russian lady? That sounds hilarious. I kind of want to experience that for some reason. It was kind of effed up but it was pretty funny. Put something in both my GF and my drinks. Probably GHB. Something kicked in and I managed to get us home. Don't remember how. We are actually lucky to still be alive after that. Put me off concerts for a long time. Was even weirder that it happened at a metal gig. As a metal head, I've accidentally drank someone's roofie at a metal head party. Some people said I just got blackout drunk but I had two rum cokes before picking a different one up because I noticed it had been full and nobody touched it for 30 minutes. I figured it was free game. Edit. On the bright side, I drank someone else's traumatic event. I got roofied when I was at a bar with my husband. There were a bunch of college boys trying to chat up a group of college girls. So I thought about it the same way you did. I saved some random college girl from having a horrible night. I'm not so nice that I would do it on purpose though. Edit to add, this had nothing to do with metal. It was at a nice relaxed waterfront bar with a guy doing Jimmy Buffet songs. Gotta be honest, not that weird that it happened at a metal gig. Most metal heads are lovely people but there are definitely some that have serious mental health issues. Was on an escalator and a woman farted in my face. Some guys have all the luck. Nice follow through. Same thing but I was eating at a McDonald's. And it stank weird, like it's not even some regular fart. I was devastated. Was a kid trying my best to become the next Tony Hawk. I tried doing an a-willy on the sidewalk next to a busy road. Ate shit in front of a bunch of people and some dude driving by with his window down yells out you suck. Dude, sucking at something is the first step towards being sorta good at something. Jake the dog. Ha. Ah. Similar thing happened to me. Was trying to do a trick on a skateboard on a normal street and crashed. Some adult walking past was like her her cool trick in a mean tone. Like fuck me for trying? It wasn't even that bad but the memory has always stuck with me. Maybe cause it was early in my life and was a point that taught me that people will judge you for being bad at something. But that's a 20 year old memory now. I was with two of my friends walking out of a Walmart at 10 PM. I was about 17, 18 years old at the time. Some dude came out and full on made out with me. Just beeline for me and grabbed the back of my head and proceeded to kiss me for about 30 seconds. I froze, my friends froze and then he ran off laughing. We stood there in disbelief for a minute or two. I went home and brushed my teeth repeatedly. Fucking strange and very invasive. I went to a party and there was a guy standing at the door doing this to the girls who walked in. I bit his tongue. That's bordering on SA, or probably is SA. I hope you called the police on his ass. I didn't. My friends and family basically dismissed it and made me feel bad for being upset. He must have thought you were beautiful. Did you even get his number? Type shit. I had just recently got my driver's license. I was driving down a back road going the speed limit, 55, and I was the only car on the road. When I checked my mirror a few seconds later, a red car was directly on my ass, so close I couldn't see his front plate. He began slowing down and speeding towards the back end of my car repeatedly. After a few minutes, he sped past me in a no-passing zone and started brake checking me, speeding up and slamming his brakes to try getting me to hit him. After a minute or so of that, 
he slammed his brakes and we both came to a full stop. He got out of his vehicle and started pounding on the driver's side window screaming and cursing me out before getting back in his car and speeding off. I pulled over and stayed there for a few minutes to ensure he was long gone before proceeding.